None of us have ever prayed to anything that way, right? None of us have ever demanded something from vending machine God. Or have we? Thanks. Quick reflection. If God answered every prayer that you have made in the last 30 days, every prayer you've made in the last 30 days, would the world be a better place? Or would just your world be a better place? Think about it for a minute. Prayer. How's your prayer life? How is it? Got something to help you reflect on how it might be. See which of these nine slides that are going to come up on the screen best describe your prayer life with the big guy upstairs. All right? Is it like this? Yeah, right. Prayer what? What? Are you serious? Don't we hire and pay people to do that? Hmm? Or maybe it's like this. Oh, that Powerball's big God. That, oh, I, I would give a tenth to the church, though, so doesn't that count for something? Three people told me that. I was standing in line with them, and they said that if... No, no, no. <laughs> all right, all right? Is, is your prayer like vending machine God, all right? Is it for the Powerball? Or is it like... Whenever you get yourself into trouble, that's when you pray, God, get me out of my mess that I have made. Or, or maybe you pray this way. Um, maybe you feel like you're the only one on the planet and you have lost communication with God and you don't know how to reach Him. Or maybe it's like this. Maybe you grew up saying a special prayer, maybe the meal prayer, and by gosh, that's the same prayer you're praying today. Does that describe where your prayer life is? Or what about this? All right, God, I'm learning. I'm learning here. I'm, I'm going to pray. I'm going to do the things that I'm supposed to. Okay, God, I give up. <laughs> where you, you're trusting for a while, but it's like nothing showed up. Maybe to that. Or maybe it's like this, describing your prayer life. It's in God's Word. I pray the scriptures. I'm faithful to doing that. Things are getting good. I'm starting to understand what God wants us to do with prayer. Or maybe it's like this. You can't wait to pray with people. Whatever the situation, a need comes, you say, all right, that's a good prayer request. Let's pray right now. Are you going to start or finish? All right, and you just grab onto the people's hands and you just go right for it. God bless you. Or maybe your prayer is like this. God, it's all about you. It's nothing about me. I just want to be in your presence for a while. You choose to speak to me, that's fine. You choose not to, that's fine. I'm just going to rest in your presence. Any of those strike anything common in describing your prayer life? Maybe it's a combination of a number of things. Could be. Church, it's time for us to dial up our prayers. It's time for us to turn up the temperature of our prayers. It's time. If you haven't significantly grown in an area, the area of prayer in your life, it's time now for us as a church to pray harder, better, more effectively. I would sincerely believe this is what God is calling this church to do calling me to do, and calling you to do as well. And it's been a couple of years since I told this story, but God once had me hunt down somebody about the message of prayer. During a church service many years ago, at the end of the service, God said, look over on the other side where the 
of people on the other side of the aisle. I go, okay. He said, do you see the old lady there with the white hair? Can you be a little more specific? That it's like 90% of the people over there. Um, he said, no, 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 look for the one with the red glasses. Absolutely true story. Yeah, I've seen her. Okay. Catch her after church. I said, falling down. What do you mean, catch her? The mass has ended, go in peace. Shoo, this lady runs out of church. She's in her 80s. Not that there's anything wrong with the 80s. 80s are great. 80s are great. Yay. Yay. And so I'm parting people trying to catch this old lady. She runs out of the church. She runs out the door. She runs down the steps. Dang, this lady can run. God's like, catch her! Catch her! And so I run across the street. By now, she's turned the corner, is running up the next street. I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and then I see she gets to her car. She locks her door. She turns on the ignition and is ready to put the car into gear. I'm like, Okay, and I get to the car and I put my hands on the hood of her car and stare at her. And I'm like, this isn't my best idea. <laughs> she looks up, puts it back in the park, rolls down the window and says, get in, Wes. Okay. And I go and sit down, and she says, I know why you're here. I said, who are you? <laughs> she said, my name is Rosemary Budish, and I know why you're here right now. Okay, Rosemary, you know about me. Why am I here right now? She said, I'm running away from God. Well, you run pretty well. <laughs> you run pretty well, Rosemary. Yep. What are you talking about? God told me something to do. And I've told him, no way. Okay, Rosemary. What did God tell you to do that you're refusing? I'm supposed to pray for you and for your family. God is hounding me to know and day and night that I'm supposed to be praying for you. Are you ready to pray, Rosemary? Yeah. You see, Rosemary lived on the block that we lived on and when I would take the kids around the block, they were small, in the wagon, she'd always be in her window. It seemed that God told her when we would be coming by. But she was telling God, no. And so God used a clueless guy like me to call her in on it. That was the final stroke. That was the final thing that made Rosemary Budish say yes to what God wanted her to do. And that was to pray for me and my family. And every time we passed the block, she was still in the window. But she said, come on in for some cookies. And we became very good friends. <clears throat> until she went to be with Jesus. Does God have to hunt you down? To cause a situation where you're trapped? If he calls you to do something, there's a reason. And now is the season for that. Church, now is the season for that. Through this 30-day challenge, that's what we have, a 30-day prayer challenge. Of how God wants to progressively deepen each of our prayer lives. 
to see prayer as a necessity, a priority. To focus our prayers more on others and more on God than on ourselves. To be praying for God's will and to truly mean that prayer. For deep and ongoing conversation with God throughout the day. To encourage and teach others to pray if we've got a good handle on it. And for us as a church family to deepen and broaden our prayer experiences together. So in this prayer challenge, today is how to pray the Lord's way. Next week, how to pray with power. Got to be here next week. After that, how to pray for your church and your city. How to pray for a nation. And now let's pray. God, we surrender. That's the first step. Because we know there is a God and it is in us. You are God. We'll do this your way, God. In Jesus', in Jesus name we pray. So let's take a look. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. I'm switching to kind of the message Bible because we're going to cover a verse that everybody here knows. And this is the introduction to that verse. From Luke chapter 11, verse 1. All right. Are we ready? Charlotte, I'm going to try to read from the back screen. Read from my book. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. Then when he finished, one of his disciples said, Master, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. What the disciples asked Jesus is what I'm asking us as a church to pray. Jesus, Master. Master means somebody's higher up than you. Teach us. And teach us what? To pray. So, the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus answers that request. Matthew chapter 6, beginning with verse 7. This is what Jesus said to his friends. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best above as below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're a blaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. That's the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. God knows better than us what we need. We can pray simply when we pray to reveal, for God to reveal who He is to us. And by the way, that's a lifelong process. Keep us alive with the meals that we need. Keep us forgiven with you and each other. Forgiveness is a big part of this verse, the Lord's Prayer. Because when we have unforgiveness in our hearts, Scripture says God can't hear our prayers. Yeah. God's in charge. So Jesus teaches us how to pray. And then through his life, oh, I lost my water. Thank you. Right? And then Jesus shows us through the things that he said, through the things that he did, he showed us how to pray. He prayed for others. Jesus spent a lot of time praying for others. When the little children were brought to him, he prayed for them. The longest 
prayer that Jesus prays in the Bible is when Jesus prayed for his friends, his disciples, right before he was arrested. <laughs> Jesus prays for others. So we're going to do that. Then Jesus prayed with others. He would take some of his closest friends with him, his disciples, and they would go off to pray. And in the early church in the Acts of the Apostles, it said they were all gathered together and prayed continuously. Praying together has a special power to it. It's where two or more are gathered. I am in their presence. That's why we pray with others. Jesus prayed alone. He went off by himself to pray. It says many times throughout the scriptures. Jesus prayed, prayed alone. He prayed in nature. It wasn't just nature was everywhere but he would go off by himself to pray away from people distractions Jesus went off by himself to pray Jesus could pray quickly and he could pray over a long period of time one place in the scriptures it says that Jesus prayed all night that's in Luke 6 12 he prayed all night. Also, Jesus prayed regularly. Just seemed to be natural to him. He'd be in the middle of something and would go to the prayer. Everywhere that he went, he made prayer a part of that. Jesus' prayers were heartfelt. He prayed with those in great need. He prayed in everyday language. And the way that he spoke was to somebody so close, Father. And then he would express the need. His prayers were from his heart. And we can learn from that example. His prayers were based on his knowledge and understanding of God. For us to pray in knowledge and understanding of God, it means we need to be in God's word. We need to know the character, the nature of God. We need to do that as well. Jesus taught persistence in prayer. He didn't give up. He continued to pray. And so do we. And then Jesus knew that not all of his prayers would be answered in the way he expected. Like, what? Thought he was God. Yes. He was also man. It says in the Gospel of Matthew 26, 36 to 44, that Jesus prayed three times. Three times he prayed that the cup of suffering would pass. But he said, but it's not my will, God, it's yours. Not all of our prayers will be answered in the way we expect either. Jesus taught us and showed us how to pray. That's what we're going to do starting today. This is not about six quick steps to prayer. This is not about follow this prayer and you'll get anything and everything you want. It's not that. It's not all about me preaching. No. This is a challenge series. That means wherever you're at with God, okay. What's the next step? And how do we do that? Think of it as a workshop series where we're not just listening, but we're actually doing it. And today, every one of us is going to be praying. This is a training series. That means you're going to hear from people with great relationships with God. And they'll tell you what their secret is and what works for them. And it's time for us to start. Just test this. <coughs> test, test. Is this one working? Yeah, good. Leading us in our first prayer of the series, Michaela Champany. Dear Lord, I pray that you help us how to learn to pray, and every moment of the day you're there with us. And 
I pray that you will help us when the devil is taking over. And I pray that we will listen to you. Amen. Thank you so much, Michaela. Michaela Chen. Michaela's 10 years old. Can you pray like that? You will. You will. Prayer is a gift, so we pray for that. Dear God, give all of us the spiritual gift of prayer. Not for ourselves, but for your purpose. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, this is a challenge. Like, okay, who are the people that would be most resistant and reluctant to this challenge series? I hope none of these apply to you. So, this is a challenge to the stubborn, the selfish, the proud, the sarcastic, the lazy, the self-made, the secure, the beaten down, self-reliant, demanding, the comfortable, and the well insulated. This is gonna hurt, but it's worth it. I hope none of those would describe you. Because when we pray, it's about dependence on God, not on us. It's about surrender. It's about doing things that don't make sense, like running after 80-year-old ladies. But you know what? God will do stuff like that. When we surrender our will, there's no telling what God will have us do. It's part of the process, people. And so we have to say, God, remove those blocks that we have. Okay? Let's pray together now. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. Please pray this with me. Now that we know that we have Jesus, this great high priest with ready access to God, let's not let it slip through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's been through weakness and testing experiencing it all, all but the sin. So let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy, accept the help, and get what he is so ready to give. The things we pray for in life, sometimes we know it's God's will, sometimes it's our will. But we know it's absolutely God's will when it comes to prayer. And so God will move, God will work, because God wants it to happen. He wants prayer to happen. Let's watch this. And they really were living for God's kingdom and for his mission. And imagine if you came collectively with people that you've sacrificed with, you've sacrificed for. This is a family. And you come united and you all pray together and say, Our Father, you've seen our lives. You know that we care about your kingdom. We want your kingdom here. We want you to change us. We want you to change the people around us. Can you imagine praying with that type of unity? What the Bible says is God is looking for people like them. 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 16, verse 9 says, The eyes of the Lord, they're, they're roaming to and fro throughout the earth. He's actually looking for people who are committed to Him. Why? Because He wants to strengthen them. I love this. God wants to answer our prayers. It's not like we're asking Him to do something He's reluctant to do. He's looking for people. And I keep thinking, 
Could you imagine God sitting on his throne and seeing you and a group of your friends praying the way he asked you to pray and praying for the things that he cares about? I kind of believe that if we did that, he's longing to hear that. He's longing to show off his power. But maybe we haven't seen it. Maybe we haven't seen his power because we haven't been praying for the things that he wanted us to pray for. Pray for the power to be on? Okay, good. And so we begin. Number one lesson in prayer is to get ourselves out of the way. To get aside our anxiousness, our worries, our frustrations. And so I'm going to ask that we all pray this verse together. And the first verse we pray, you can do better than that. Bing, bing. Let's hear it. Let's pray this together. From Philippians 4, verses 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. First we pray to get rid of the things that are the obstacles. During this series, we have different targets. Different targets. Can we have the house lights all the way up, please? All right? Prayer walls. Anybody know how many times we've painted over these? Once? No. Three. Three or four. Three. Yeah. This auditorium used to be about 400 feet wide. And it's just got so many coats of paint on it. <laughs> right? The prayers are still there. So this is a dozen times? Who knows? Three times. Three times. Three times. All right. These are prayer walls. There aren't many churches where you can pray, when, where you can write on the walls and not get arrested. But uh, this is one of those kinds of churches. Um, here's what we have. These are our prayer walls. They go on both sides. In a couple times there, there are buckets. This isn't to collect the water that keeps dripping down, um, although it would have been a good double duty. And inside of these are markers. They're Sharpies. We want people to write their prayer requests on it. All right? They're put up really high. That's because it's for really big prayers. All right? Really high prayers. Not the little prayers, but the really high ones. And so, starting today, we're going to have everybody during the service writing their prayer requests on this wall. And something new that we're adding. There are stars here. When God answers that prayer, come. It's got tape on it and put a star for where God answered your prayer. We're conveniently doing that right after people come forward to receive communion. So on your way back, you're going right past it. There's maybe about 50, 70 markers. Start today with writing your prayer requests. And here's what we'd like to do. Um, this first prayer, I'd like to use that to pray for your prayer life. And to finish this sentence, Lord, help me to whatever. You don't have to write, Lord, help me to. But it's in regards to your prayer life. Where are you stuck? What do you think is the next thing that God is calling you to? May your voices, may your, your mind and your heart be open now to the Holy Spirit that we ask to show us all what is next. You don't have to sign your name to the bottom of this. God knows who you are. All right? 
but to simply take the marker and then to write, to pray from the Bible better, to pray for others instead of myself, to find somebody I can teach about prayer. Something like that would work. And we'll have it up on the screen during communion. So that's what we have for that. It is a neat and a good time for us to do this prayer challenge. There are some people going through incredible struggles right now. I mean seriously. Where they feel alone. Where they don't know what's going on. Where there are opportunities in front and they don't know which one. What God wants. People who are so beaten down, they blame themselves. People who've never heard God's voice. God understands and He wants to make this thing happen. So pray big prayers. Pray big prayers. It's time for us for communion then. If we could have the communion ministers come on down. up we've been disobedient you God in your infinite mercy grace and love send your only begotten son Jesus our Savior to live amongst us and to restore our relationship with God Jesus suffered every hardship and adversity every trial trouble tribulation and temptation that we faced he faced Yet he did not sin. And finally Jesus stretched out his arms. And he paid the price for my sin. Praise Jesus. And for your sin as well. And so we remember. That on the night in which our Lord Jesus was given over to suffering and death. Through the betrayal of a friend. He took bread. And after he had blessed it and given thanks, God, for it, he gave it to his disciples, his friends, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. And then after supper, he took the cup. And after he had blessed it and given thanks, God for it. He said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant with you, which is shed for the remission of your sins and for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of our Lord Jesus until he comes again. For communion, you do not need to be a member of the River Church to receive communion. You've asked God into your life, and that's fine. And that's fine. Communion is a chance for us to experience God. And when you come forward, it's not because you've earned it because you haven't. It's because you need God. That's why we come forward. That's our invitation. There will be somebody with that and 
when you come down and around to the sides, to hold out a piece of this box of bread. And the person will say, this is his body, broken just for you. Crack off a piece. And then go to the next person who has the cup. And that person will say, this is his blood poured out just for you. Take that cracker, dip it in, and then proceed along the sides where, grab a marker, grab a marker. God, help me pray whatever. And we'll see how things go from there. Even people way up on the promenade will pop up there with communion if you're unable to make it down. But when we come forward, we're saying yes to God. And let's do His will and deepen our prayer experiences. Let's come forward.
slow down. You can do that for the rest of the video.
A church that prays together stays together. Amen. Amen. Next week, how to pray with power. I'm not talking about it. We're going to do it. We're going to grow. We're going to grow. And we're going to do this God's way. Okay, please pray the prayer that's coming on the screen with me. Father God, oh God I, I choose to put actions behind my faith today. I trust that you are at work in my life. I seek to do your will over mine and will do whatever you ask me to do. Amen. Amen. The prayer challenge for this week is based on something very familiar to a lot of us. Second Chronicles 7 and 14, where God says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. That's a challenge right there. <laughs> yeah. If we say we're God's people, first step, if they humble themselves and pray that's next and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways it's a lot of work then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land powerful powerful verse the offering is next Thank you. <laughs> you guys got that? Yeah. All right. I wouldn't have let us go. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, but before we get to offering, here's some other really uh, important stuff. First of all, connection cards. You got this when you came in the door this morning. Let's you know 30 day prayer challenge is on. We've got some announcements in the back. <clears throat> uh, a couple of these announcements I want to highlight are the potluck, which uh, there should be a slide for it. It's got a link up there, so we can all let everybody know, hey, we're coming, we're bringing this tasty cuisine uh, to share with our church family. And also another sign up for the men's shelter that is coming up at the beginning of next month, right? Like the third? The sixth. The sixth, see? The slide knows. <laughs> So both of those are uh, important. If you could only do one, I would say do the men's shelter. But there's no reason you only have to do one. All right, uh, on the bottom of this card is a little uh, tear-off section. If this is your first or second time, I'd really like to encourage you uh, to fill this out. Let us know, hey, you were here. Uh, we have some spots on there. If, if you want more information on any of our ministries or becoming more involved. And on the back, there's a section for prayer requests even when we're not doing a prayer challenge, we like to pray for each other. We have a team who, this is their main gig. They want to pray for you all week long. They meet here on Tuesday nights, I believe. They, right? Is it Tuesday nights still? Yeah. Tuesday nights. 6.30. 6 30. I'm sure they'd be thrilled if you just showed up unannounced and say, hey, I want to pray with you guys. But that's extra credit. Just fill out this card, throw it in the offering. <laughs> Do they really want more people? Did I just swear me meeting? I would be glad if people just showed up to worship practice for no reason. All right. I'm getting derailed. Let's uh, pray for our offer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this morning. I praise you for being a God that you can bring all of these requests to, these concerns, these longings of the heart. God, I know uh, there's stuff under layers of paint that, that I wrote down years ago that still haven't come to pass. And I know that you care about those things just as much as what's happening tomorrow. So I just uh, lend encouragement to everybody who's, who's in transition, who's, who's in that waiting period. Just keep
keep praying and God can be the, the God of all comfort. Um, and Lord, we pray uh, just for this offering time. We bless your name and prayerfully give to you what you've asked. And uh, just thank you this morning, Lord, and for your presence. In Jesus' name. Here's your challenges for this week. My challenge to you this week is that every day you ask God to help you pray for His will in your life. Remember, God knows what you need more than you do for God's will to be done in your life. It's an important step of us getting out of the way of God, of us not limiting what God can do. Every day, Ask God to help you pray for His will to be done. That's the challenge between you and God. Then I have a challenge between you and others. When somebody tells you, would you please pray for this? My challenge to you is this, that you stop, that you say, then let's pray now. Would you like to start or finish? I love the look of surprise on people's faces, but you know people rarely say no. The second challenge, when someone says, would you pray for this? Yes, let's pray right now. I have prayed in intersections of major cities in just this way. And I added the prayer, God, may we not get run over. Um, <laughs> please God, but your will, your will done in that. Sean mentioned about the shelter. The third week with the guys is coming in just a few weeks. Should you be one of the two people in the world that doesn't have internet? All right? Big Bob is a sign-up sheet. All right? Stand up, Bob. All right? Bright red. Can't miss them. All right? We need men to stay overnight. We need people to make good meals. We need people to pray with them. Lots of things that we need help for. Sign up. Be a blessing. Those guys really are a blessing from God when they come. Also, right after service is over this morning, um, there is a New Orleans mission trip kickoff. It's a no-pressure meeting just in the church office, out the doors, one door to the left. And it's explaining what we're going to be doing in New Orleans from June 28th to July 6th. How we're, our missions are prayer-led. They're spirit-led. When we get up in the morning, we say, God, what do you want me to do today? And then we go out and do it. So it's one hour. Come, there's no pressure. Check it out, see pictures, hear from those who've gone before. We would love to have you in the church office after service. All right. I think it's we're ready for the benediction this morning. Did I forget anything else? No. Want to take another offering? <laughs> Don't even. <laughs> All right, please stand for this morning's benediction. May you pray like Jesus. May you love like Jesus. 
and may you serve like Jesus. Have a great week. See everybody in the office in a few minutes. <laughs>